While Lauren Holly may not be a household name, her long and varied career has spanned several decades and even more genres. She has worked consistently in film and television and has even collabed with the fashion company to introduce a clothing line called Lauren's Closet. Here's her stunning transformation. Lauren Holly was born on October 28, 1963, in Bristol, Pennsylvania. She had a relatively normal childhood, growing up in the small town of Geneva, New York. As she told the podcast This Mom Loves, her small town meant that she had a private, sheltered life. Holly explained, I was able to go through and make my own mistakes totally in private, in my small town with my 10 friends knowing, and it's completely different now. Both of her parents were college teachers. Her father taught screenwriting, and her mother taught art history. Looking back on her upbringing, Holly sees her mother as a real inspiration. She watched her mom continue her studies while she was growing up because her mother had been young when Holly was born. She told Reddit, I'm so proud she got her PhD when I was in high school and went on to be a well-known art historian. When Lauren Holly was 12, her father went on sabbatical to London, England. While Holly was there, she discovered her passion for acting. She had always been interested in acting, thanks to her great-grandmother who was an actress herself. But as she explained to the website Female First, until then, she had planned to become a lawyer in rebellion against her parents, who were, quote, hippies. In London, she began taking music and acting classes, and that's when her plans changed. She said, I studied music and dramatic arts there and developed this passion and did it on the side at college. In college, she acted in plays while studying English at Sarah Lawrence College. In her last year, the well-known director Francis Ford Coppola saw her perform. He hired her as a model for his wife's clothing, and soon after, she found her way into professional acting. One of Lauren Holly's first acting jobs was on the soap opera All My Children as Julie, a teenage runaway. While being on a soap opera wasn't exactly giving Holly A-lister material to work with, it gave her the training and experience she needed to progress to other genres and mediums later on in her career. She told Smashing Interviews magazine, It was one of those things with a huge learning curve for me. It was an amazing experience. I always say if directors want a hardworking actor, they should take them off of soaps because that is a daily grind. Holly explained she worked on the show for three years straight, learning 40 pages of material each day. When she left, she felt prepared for anything. Plus, it turns out, her dad was a huge fan of the show. After several years of modeling, waiting tables, auditioning, and acting in some forgettable films and TV shows, Lauren Holly got her big break in the TV show Picket Fences. This was followed by a role in Dragon as Linda, the wife of Bruce Lee. Holly said at the time, I feel very lucky. Many women in the business complain that there are no great women's roles, and I am sitting here with two of them. According to Holly, her success was down to luck, but clearly filmgoers and filmmakers were impressed with her work. After Holly's career took off, she landed a starring role in Dumb and Dumber, opposite Jim Carrey. With this project, Holly not only became a household name, but she also began dating Carrie. She told the website Female First, It was fun to make a movie with your boyfriend or whatever. Big groups of us of the crew and cast would go to Lake Powell and rent houseboats for the long weekends and just do cookouts and jet ski and swim, and it was just so much fun, you know? As we mentioned, one of Lauren Holly's first big films was the 1993 movie Dragon about Bruce Lee. For Holly, it was an unforgettable, life-changing project, even though she had initially been hesitant about accepting the role in the first place. She told the podcast This Mom Loves that the movie, quote, affected her spiritually. Her younger brother had died unexpectedly shortly before filming began. She said, It was an emotional experience for me. She credits her co-star Jason Scott Lee with helping her heal. Holly noted, It's hard to explain, but he opened my eyes to all of that healing, and it was really something to be in Asia going through my grieving process. It sounds like filming Dragon came at just the right time for Holly, and the experience is one that she'll remember and appreciate for the rest of her life. After making Dumb and Dumber, Lauren Holly's life changed completely. She and her co-star Jim Carrey were dating and living together at the time. The tabloids became obsessed with the pair. At first it was kind of fun, and then our whole life became about, we have to keep them out. Holly said after Dumb and Dumber came out, all of a sudden, everything about them became news. And it was frightening, she explained. Apparently, photographers would hide near their house and go through their garbage. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey, Holly revealed that some members of the press even camped out under their tennis court to try to get images of them in their house. Holly also noted that these days, celebrities tend to seek out press as a way to elevate their status. For her and Carrie, it was the opposite. Lauren Holly and Jim Carrey were married for just under one year, between 1996 and 1997, according to E. However, as Holly pointed out in an interview with George Strombolopoulos, they had been together for a long time before their divorce. Not only was the divorce heartbreaking, it was also a hot topic for the press. She said, When we got divorced, I had a really hard time. I always felt like everybody knew my personal business. Even on the street or in her local coffee shop, Holly often felt that people knew who she was and had their own judgments about her divorce. After experiencing heartbreak in the public eye, Holly 
realized that Hollywood wasn't for her. Eventually, she even left LA altogether, so that she could finally find the privacy she had craved during her divorce. However, she has remained on cordial terms with Kerry. In 2020, she even commented on his impression of President Joe Biden during an interview with Entertainment Tonight Canada. She said, He's a genius, and you know, I've spent enough time with him that when I heard that he was doing it, I thought, oh, this is gonna be so good. In 2005, Lauren Holly took on what would become a career-defining role, NCIS director Jenny Shepard in NCIS. Holly told Channel 10 at the time, I really appreciate Don Belisario giving me the opportunity to play such a character, because it's a boys club, the NCIS, and in real life it is. I mean, they're not ready for a female director. Holly explained the role was initially slated for just six episodes. She wrote on her now defunct website, I was happy to be a minor character because that meant I could be with my young family more. She was raising young children in Chicago at the time. Eventually, the family moved to LA so that she wouldn't have to commute to work. Holly went on to explain that she enjoyed the project throughout her 10 years on the show, but eventually, she became anxious to branch out and take on new roles, so the decision was made to kill off Lauren Holly's character on NCIS. Lauren Holly tied the knot for a third time in 2001 with a Canadian investment banker. In 2008, the couple moved with their three sons from LA to Canada. Holly officially became a citizen and landed a role in a Canadian mystery series called Motive. Finally, everything seemed to fall into place for the actress. As Holly explained to This Mom Loves, Toronto ended up being the perfect spot for her family to live in privacy while Holly continued working. To be honest, I was living in Los Angeles and I was on NCIS, and I did not want to raise the boys in LA. I picked Toronto kind of by a fluke because I grew up in upstate New York about two hours away. I have family there, and I thought, okay, it's close to my family and it's a city where lots happens. Holly and her family love Canada, and they haven't looked back since. After moving to Canada and continuing work as an actress, Lauren Holly branched out into a new industry, fashion. In 2015, the actress partnered with the Canadian clothing company Le Chateau to release a line of clothing called Lauren's Closet. Holly explained to Cliché magazine that she'd been inspired to design clothes after acting in the movie After the Ball. You know, you can put on a pair of you know leggings from Le Chateau and you just feel a little fancy. When Holly filmed After the Ball, she found out the clothes were from Le Chateau, and it quickly became her favorite store. She explained, I became enamored with the clothes in the film. I started shopping there so much that I would joke on set with the owners that the real name of their store should be Lauren's Closet. Holly went on to describe her collection. It was filled with cozy plaid, scarves, and suede, everything a working woman could want. And she said, Women are taking care of a lot, personally and professionally. We love to look good. I need to feel comfortable in our clothes. Even though Lauren Holly is now a Canadian living a quiet, private life, she was once an up-and-coming Hollywood star. In 2017, the actress revealed that when she was younger, she had been harassed by the notorious producer Harvey Weinstein, shortly after other actresses made similar accusations. As she told the Canadian chat show The Social, I was in my 30s. I was not a young ingenue, and I was certainly not new to Hollywood. I was a seasoned Hollywood person. Holly went on to say that she realized she had a responsibility to come forward. Weinstein once invited Holly up to his hotel room, used the bathroom, and then had a shower in front of her. Holly didn't know how to react without being rude or risking her career. She said, I didn't quite know how to handle myself at that moment. I wanted to flee. I was scared. Then, Weinstein offered her a massage and asked for one in return. Holly fled the room and avoided him in the future, she told Variety. Lauren Holly turned 57 in 2020. As the actress has gotten older, she has focused more and more on her well-being. In an interview with New Beauty magazine, she explained, One of the biggest things you can do is just accept yourself as you age. While mindset is a big part of Holly's approach, she also takes care of her body and her skin and eats a diet of fresh food. Her favorite form of exercise, she said, is Bikram yoga, an hour-and-a-half-long hot yoga session. As for skin and hair, it's all about cleanliness and, quote, moisture, 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 as she put it. It sounds like Holly's healthy, laid-back Canadian lifestyle is really painful paying off. Lauren Holly may be in her late 50s, but it doesn't seem as though her career is slowing down anytime soon. In 2020, she starred in the Netflix series Tiny Pretty Things as a formidable ex-prima ballerina turned teacher, Monique. Holly had initially been considered for another role. She explained to Us Weekly, The producers and the director asked me for breakfast, and I was bold enough to tell them how much I loved the role of Monique at the breakfast, which is always sort of a risk. It paid off, and Holly got the chance to play one of her favorite roles to date. As Holly told Rain Magazine, she hopes to continue acting, but it isn't always easy. She said, it's a hard occupation, from the sense of you can never really make a plan hard onto any relationship due to travel and getting consumed for weeks on maintaining that faith. We're like a certain breed. You have to love it. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE. That's 1-800-656-4673.